Hey guys, Keaton here from TechSmart, and today we're going to be unboxing and reviewing the brand new Samsung Galaxy S5. Now before we start this unboxing and review, if you guys would like to win the brand new Samsung Galaxy S5 or the all new HTC One, also known as the HTC M8, go and drop me a comment down below with your choice, and while you're at it, hit the thumbs up button as it lets me know you guys want more giveaways like this. So without further ado, let's go and dive into the unboxing portion. So starting with the unboxing portion, on the front it says Samsung Galaxy S5, 5 being the 5th edition of the Samsung Galaxy S series, and on the back is the specifications, and then on the side is just some general SIM card info. Popping the top, we're immediately greeted with the Samsung Galaxy S5 in shimmering white with some labels just protecting the screen and everything. Digging in further, we have our literature pack, our micro USB cable, our earbuds, the ear tips, and a power adapter. Digging into the literature just a bit more here, we have some quick start guide info, and then we have the SIM card info, which just tells us where this phone can work, and in my case, it can only work in the Americas, whether that's North America, Central America, or South America. So taking the plastic off both sides of the Samsung Galaxy S5, the screen looks absolutely gorgeous just right out of the box, and let's go ahead and power it on and dive on into the review portion of this video. So starting off with the hardware, we have a 5.1 inch 1080p Super AMOLED display with a PPI count or pixels per inch count of 400. At the top is a speaker and a 2.1 megapixel front facing camera and towards the bottom of the phone we have our capacitive home button which is also a fingerprint sensor and the two capacitive buttons on the side of the fingerprinted home button. To the right of the device we have the sleep wake switch and towards the left is some volume rockers and at the top of the phone is an IR blaster, a microphone and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and towards the bottom of the phone is an additional microphone and the USB 3.0 charging port. To the back of the phone is a 16 megapixel camera with 4K video capabilities and the heart rate sensor, which we'll go ahead and talk about a little bit later. At the bottom of the phone, we have the speaker, and just touching a little bit more on the back here, it doesn't feel exactly like you would see on the Samsung Galaxy Note 3, or some of the Tab Pro or No Pro tablets made by Samsung, but it has kind of a semi-perforated feeling, and it feels a lot better than just slimy plastic, so I think that's a big plus, and I like the feeling of the back as a whole. So just rounding out the specifications here, the Galaxy S5 has a quad-core Snapdragon 2.5 GHz processor, 2 GB of RAM, the Adreno 330 GPU, LTE capabilities depending on your area, Android 4.4.2 in terms of software at the time of this recording, a 2800 mAh battery, a micro SD card slot for expandable storage, an IP67 certification, meaning this phone is very durable compared to some of the other Samsung Galaxy S models and other phones out on the market. So moving to software on the phone, it does feature Android 4.4.2 KitKat at the time of this recording. And to be honest, I'm a big fan of Android 4.4.2 KitKat and just KitKat as a whole because I think it's a nice overhaul for Android and it kind of adds some new features to any device that it's running on. So since we're looking at a Samsung device here, it does feature the touch with skin. And I think on the Samsung Galaxy S5, it's a lot less intrusive than it has in the past. And it kind of has some new design overhauls, such as when you go into the settings menu, the list is no longer there, but it's actually circularized icons, which is kind of a nice fresh look to the settings menu as a whole. So some other cool features that I really like, besides Android being so customizable and getting access to the Google Play Store, is the camera. In the camera, there's tons of options for just taking different types of photos, such as Beauty Shot and HDR, and we'll, and we'll take a look at the camera a little bit later within the video, but I just think the amount of options there, while they can be confusing from a user coming from iOS to Samsung or Windows Phone to uh, a Samsung device, the options are just phenomenal and you can easily go and customize each and every picture or do a certain type of shot that you wouldn't be able to do on a competing device. So also in the software realm is ultra power saving mode. So if you're ever in a pinch to need to send that last tweet or text message, you can go ahead and turn the setting on and it'll convert all the colors and just all the cool things about the display into a black and white display and just allow you to get that tweet or text message out. And if you go ahead and switch it on now, once your phone is fully charged, you're seriously going to notice how much extra battery life can be conserved just by turning all the pixels to black and white. And I think this is a really cool feature because we're always trying to send that last message and we're always trying to constantly keep using our phones and I think this is one of those features that every manufacturer should start incorporating into their phones because a lot of these smartphones die too quickly but with the battery size on this Samsung Galaxy S5 that might not exactly be the case and we'll go and take a look at that a little bit later. So overall I'm a big fan of the software on the Samsung Galaxy S5 and I think when the next iteration of Android does come out it's going to be really cool to see how it accents the Samsung Galaxy S5. So moving over to one of my favorite portions of the video it's the display. So the displays on smartphones have constantly been getting 
getting bigger and had better resolution and some displays in 2014 are even at the 2k resolution which is just really cool so the samsung galaxy s5 features a 5.1 inch 1080p super amoled display with a ppi count of 432 and trust me guys it looks absolutely fantastic color accuracy is spot on and whether you're watching a movie posting a tweet or just browsing the internet and just looking at some articles text video Anything you're doing on this phone looks so sharp, and I think it's one of the biggest selling points to any device, but more specifically the Samsung Galaxy S5. I think the extra 0.1 inch of an upgrade from the Samsung Galaxy S4 is worth it, and I think the color accuracy is just a hint better than it is on the Samsung Galaxy S4. I don't know, it's just my experience with the phone, and I was just completely in love with the display because I am an iPhone user, and just getting that extra 1.1 inches is seriously nice no matter what you're doing on the phone. Also, another great thing is when you're taking pictures, you get a nice big old viewfinder and that's fantastic because you can easily see every single crevice of the picture with having such a big viewfinder and you can really just start to get into the picture versus some other smartphones that have smaller displays such as my iPhone 5s. So overall I was a big fan of the display on this phone and I think any user who doesn't want a phablet of a phone but wants a bigger display than your iPhone 5s, the Samsung Galaxy S5 is most definitely for you. So up next here it's the camera. So starting with the front facing camera it's a 2.1 megapixel camera and it can really capture whatever you want with it in a nice vivid picture. The color accuracy is spot on there and although it's not as good as the 16 megapixel camera found in the rear, it was able to perform very well for me whether I was taking snapchats, using Skype, or just pretty much using any type of the modes that do optimize the front facing camera on the Samsung Galaxy S5. Now flipping to the star of the show which is the 16 megapixel rear facing camera, this guy looks absolutely fantastic and I know Instagram shots typically look better on iPhones but I felt that the Instagram shots or just using the camera as a whole was quite comparable to the iPhone 5s in my experience and I found that some of the modes such as HDR mode and beauty shot were just some of the modes that I was using quite frequently and I just think the 16 megapixel can really capture detail in a new light and I loved every single pixel that I was able to look back on in my photos. So also found in the phone is 4k video capabilities and while 4k is kind of the future for video and everything it doesn't look too good on any smartphone and this is the case for the Samsung Galaxy S5 because of the lack in optical image stabilization. So maybe when they do add it to the phone and the Samsung Galaxy S6 or just any type of other smartphone out on the market, 4K will look phenomenal on this phone. But in terms of 1080p video capabilities, it looked fantastic and I was really able to capture everything I wanted to and having the nice and big 5.1 inch viewfinder always accented to my photos. So overall, I was a big fan of the camera on this phone and I think any user switching to this phone will notice it too. So transitioning on to benchmarks as this is kind of the best way to represent how powerful the phone is overall, we're going to be testing out Geekbench, Quadrant, and Tutu and GFX Bench to test out the GPU and just total performing power of the Samsung Galaxy S5. So after our tests have concluded, these are some of the results that we got for each test. So in terms of battery life on the Samsung Galaxy S5, I was able to achieve around 9 to 10 hours on a single charge and just using it pretty averagely. So my use really consisted of just watching some YouTube videos throughout the day, responding to some emails, tweeting, text messaging, just the standard stuff that most consumers would do. And obviously the battery life will go down severely if you're using this phone every second of the day and it will go up if you're not really using the phone at all. But again, 9 to 10 hours is pretty average compared to some other smartphones out in the market, but it's not as good as the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 or the HTC One, also known as the M8. So one of the cool features on the phone here, especially in the battery category, is the ultra power saving mode. So I talked about this a little bit in software, but what it does is it converts all the beautiful colors that you see on the 5.1 inch display to black and white and really starts to conserve all the battery power on this phone. So if you're at 3% battery and you switch on ultra power saving mode, you're definitely gonna be able to go ahead and get that phone to last a lot longer than you would be with just having a colorful and beautiful display. So I think a lot of companies should be incorporating this into their phones because it really helps out battery a lot and can allow consumers to just finish up that text message or tweet. And believe me, most of those things don't even require a color display. It's just kind of one of those nice features to have. So overall, I was definitely impressed with the battery life on the Samsung Galaxy S5. And although it's not perfect and doesn't give me a full day's worth of use which is about 17 hours in my book i thought it was pretty standard and i can't wait till the samsung galaxy s6 to see how they've improved in terms of battery life
So in terms of new features found in the Galaxy S5, it is completely littered with them, and I think this is definitely one of the biggest selling points to the phone. So up first is the fingerprint censored home button. So we saw some similar technology way back in the day, and when I mean way back in the day, I mean the Motorola Atrix, which came out just a few years ago. Yes, I'm talking like I was born way, way, way back when. But the fingerprint sensor on here definitely does work, and although we do see its similar mechanism found on Apple's iPhone 5S, where you just place your finger on the home button, with this one you actually have to swipe from the screen to the button so although it can be a little bit weird from a user switching to the iPhone 5s or just going in there thinking it's going to be just placing your finger on the home button it's actually not that intrusive and it works very well when you are doing it although it does take a little bit of time to get used to I found it keeping my phone secure and was a lot better than just swiping it without any passwords or just typing in a numerical or alphabetical password up next is IP67 certification so I did a video on this pretty much testing out the phone's IP67 certification especially in water and durability and if you want to check those out, links can be found on screen and right below that like button on this video. But this durability on this phone is absolutely crazy. We've run over it with an SUV. We've put it in the pool for over an hour. I've even thrown it in my washing machine. This guy still survives. And I think with a lot of consumers who can be clumsy or just are using it on a daily basis, this phone will definitely last you a lot longer and is actually a lot more durable than the Samsung Galaxy S4. So that is a pretty big upgrade to this smartphone and allows consumers to have that peace of mind with their smartphone. So up next here is S Health, and this is one of the biggest things found in the phone, and there's actually a hardware implementation found in the back to accent this. So starting off with S Health, you can input your food that you've consumed for the day. You can check out the pedometer portion if you want to keep track of how many steps you've taken throughout the day. But I think the coolest thing here is being able to calculate your heart rate or your pulse. So what you do is you just place your finger on the back of the phone, and although I thought it would be intrusive and weird to just place your finger on the back of the phone while watching the press conference, it's actually not that weird at all, and it's really nice to be able to work out at the gym and find out where you kind of need to target your heart rate to burn the most calories or just stay the most fit in terms of your life. So I found that the feature on here worked very well and I think the whole S Health integration should be found on more smartphones and we might be seeing that with the iPhone 6 and iOS 8. But overall I really just was impressed with the S Health feature and I think a lot of consumers are going to enjoy it too. So just finally here it's more software quirks so such as the settings menu how it does look different than it has looked in the past. And there's some other software quirks within there and I'll let you guys go ahead and find those but I think the touch with modifications with Android 4.4.2 are nice and subtle and I think a lot of consumers are gonna like those so in the end this phone is littered with new features and I know a lot of consumers are seriously gonna enjoy all the new quirks that the Samsung Galaxy S5 has so at the end of the day, I'd recommend the Galaxy S5 to any user who wants a great smartphone with a big display, and that definitely does take a look at the health integrations that smartphones can have. Although a lot of manufacturers have just relied on developer support to kind of make the health integrations, Samsung is doing it so you're getting the OEM experience when you want to go ahead and work out and use the health performance on a phone. And I think that's really great, and I know a lot of consumers are really gonna like that. I'm a big fan of the camera, the fingerprint at home button, and just a lot of the new features that can be found on the S5, and I think a lot of you guys are going to appreciate it as well and also android 4.4.2 the decent battery life and just having an ip67 certified phone it really just adds to the performance and i think samsung has truly killed it this year now although some of these upgrades are very minimal and it's not that big of a leap as we did see with the samsung galaxy s3 to the s4 i think it's just enough to convert s4 users to the s5 or any new user looking for a new smartphone and finally by owning a samsung phone you're going to get that direct wearable support so such as the gear 2 gear 2 neo or gear fit so this means you can start to integrate some of those cool health benefits found in S Health with a cool accessory that you can go ahead and slap on your wrist. So the Samsung Galaxy S5 starts at $229 on a two-year contract and is available in charcoal black, shimmering white, electric blue, and in copper gold, and will be in stores on April 11th of 2014, and depending on your carrier, it might even be there a little bit sooner. Seriously guys, this phone is definitely super proofed and can even withstand a washing machine, which is always cool, and that's definitely a big selling point for me on a smartphone. Thank you guys so much for watching this video where we unboxed and reviewed the brand new Samsung Galaxy S5. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to win a Samsung Galaxy S5 or the all new HTC One, also known as the M8, go and drop me a like down below and also throw me a comment down below letting me know if you guys would like the M8 or the brand new Samsung Galaxy S5. Finally, go and subscribe to the channel to be notified when we produce a brand new video like this or a giveaway or a cool crazy test testing the phone's water capabilities or how durable it can be to a knife and a car key. Thank you guys once again and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye-bye.
recent a avut loc prezentarea noului Galaxy S5 în magazinul Darwin din centrul Shopping Moldova. Totuși a venit timpul să-i facem și un review. Ce avantaje și dezavantaje are noul flagman de la Samsung urmează să aflăm în review-ul de astăzi. Galaxy S5 este smartphone-ul de top al celor de la Samsung, iar, cum ne-am obișnuit în fiecare an, modelele Galaxy sunt într-o perfecționare continuă. Un alt display, cameră mai bună, noi funcții, dar același plastic. Mai pe scurt, să le luăm pe toate la rând. La exterior, Samsung ezită până când se treacă la aluminiu. În schimb, un alt plastic. Mulți au criticat textura telefonului, inclusiv și eu de la început. Dar, după o perioadă mai lungă de folosire, am înțeles că nu este totul chiar atât de rău. Nu e cea mai ideală soluție, dar nici pe departe cea mai rea. De obicei, smartphone-urile din aluminiu, ca spre exemplu iPhone-urile, trebuie îngrijite mai ceva ca un copil de două luni. Foarte atent puse pe masă, purtate în huse, pentru că la orice mișcare, acestea se pot zgria. Dacă e să vorbim de S5, aici avem un plan plastic perforat. În primul rând, un mare avantaj este că nu lasă urme, spre deosebire de telefoanele cu acoperire de sticlă. În al doilea rând, zgrieturile aici vor apărea doar dacă veți folosi un cuțit. Și încă un avantaj este că smartphone-ul nu alunecă din mână. Chiar dacă se întâmplă să-l zgâriați, capacul din spate poate fi oricând schimbat. Ce ține de exterior, Samsung a pătrățit un pic colțurile și a făcut telefonul mai mare datorită ecranului de 5,1 inch. Schimbări sunt și în partea de jos. Acum, în loc de butonul menu, Samsung a introdus în sfârșit butonul pentru multitasking, iar ce ține de butonul fizic, acesta are acum un sensor de scanare al amprentelor. Nu prea înțeleg tendința producătorilor de a introduce neapărat această opțiune, însă știu că dacă aceasta mai mult incomodează decât ușurează activitatea, atunci trebuie perfecționată și apoi introdusă. Spre deosebire de alte sensori de scanare, pe S5 trebuie să glisezi degetul deasupra butonului, ceea ce nu este foarte comod, mai ales când îl ții în mână. În schimb, pentru cine securitatea este pe primul loc, această mișcare va merita sacrificiul. O altă proprietate foarte importantă a lui S5 este că nu va mai trebui să-l feriți de apă și praf, acesta rezistând jumătate de oră la un metru adâncime sub apă. Mulți spun că, spre deosebire de smartphone-urile Xperia, S5 este doar water resistant, adică nu poate să lucreze în continuu sub apă. Da, este adevărat, dar presupun că dacă scăpați telefonul în apă, 20 de minute o să fie îndeajuns pentru a-l găsi și scoate din apă, nu? Iar dacă îl scape în cratița cu borș, totul va fi ok. Cu asta ne-am clarificat, mergem mai departe la display. Aici avem un Super AMOLED de 5.1 inch cu rezoluție Full HD. Schimbarea pe care au adus-o Samsung la acest display este așa numită opțiune Adapt Display. Astfel, ecranul alege balanța de culori, luminozitatea și contrastul imaginii în dependență de lumina de afară sau de contentul pe care îl vizualizați. Așa că culorile super contrastante de pe ecranele AMOLED aici nu vor fi atât de prezente. La fel m-au bucurat unghiurile de vizualizare ca de obicei la maxim. La optică, Samsung a adăugat mai multe surprize. Pe față avem o cameră de 2 megapixeli foarte rapidă, iar pe spate deja una de 16. Cea din urmă este la moment camera cu cea mai rapidă focusare din toate smartphone-urile de pe piață. Mai exact 0,3 secunde. Nu am nimic de spus la acest capitol, camera într-adevăr se mișcă extrem de rapid. Pe lângă asta a fost îmbunătățită și opțiunea HDR+. Spre deosebire de oricare alt smartphone pe care am testat regimul HDR, aici la activarea acestuia rezultatul este văzut înainte de a face poza. De obicei, pe alte smartphone-uri, poza HDR apare după o procesare de 5 secunde. Printre funcții noi a apărut și Selective Focus, care permite focusarea obiectelor după ce a fost făcută poza. Cei drept, cam lasă de dori. În general, camera și meniul ei au din partea mea doar cuvinte de laudă. La funcțiile de bază se descurcă foarte bine, iar meniul este cu mult mai simplificat. Și da, era să uit ce ține de video, varianta europeană a lui S5 filmează în format Ultra HD. De la cameră trecem la specificații. Aici avem două procesoare quad-core care lucrează la diferite frecvențe în dependență de operațiile care le faceți. 2 GB de RAM și 16 de stocare, cu posibilitatea adăugării unui card de până la 128 de GB. Dacă până acum smartphone-urile de la Samsung erau considerate greoaie, noul sistem și noile specificații te fac să uiți de asta. Totul merge surprinzător de rapid atât navigarea cât și jocurile.
dacă tot am pomenit de sistem, S5 are ultima versiune de Android 4.4.2 cu o interfață TouchWiz simplificată. Anume, asta face ca smartphone-ul să meargă atât de repede. Versiunile precedente de Android, peste care se adăuga un TouchWiz supraîncărcat îngreuna cu mult telefonul. Dar, iată cu ultimele schimbări, aduc rezultate destul de bune. La fel, TouchWiz-ul a scăpat în sfârșit de interfața de clown. A fost redesenat meniul Settings, dar și mai multe iconițe de sistem. Totodată, împreună cu TouchWiz, vin și o mulțime de funcții interesante pe noul S5. Una dintre ele este Private Mode. Aceasta vă poate ascunde de ochii lumii pozele făcute în baie sau alte chestii compromițătoare, toate cu ajutorul scannerului de amprente. Uite, aici este destul de interesant să-l folosești. Pentru cei care au copii, Samsung a introdus regimul Kids Mode. Dorința copiilor de a apasa toate butoanele poate să vă aducă un minus 500 de lei în cont sau cine știe un reset la tot telefonul. Ei bine, cu ajutorul acestui regim, butoanele sunt dezactivate, iar pentru a ieși va fi nevoie neapărat de o parolă. Aici sunt doar aplicațiile de care are nevoie copilul și un crocodil care are în loc de cap un fier răstrău. Da, un pic straniu. În orice caz, foarte comod, îi puteți încredința telefonul copilului fără nicio ezitare. Nu am spus nimic încă despre baterie. Aici avem 2800 de mAh, o cifră care nu aduce mai mult de o zi în regim activ de utilizare. În schimb, Samsung a introdus regimul Ultra Power Saving Mode care este o chestie de-a dreptul utilă. La activarea lui, ecranul se face alb-negru, luminozitatea se reduce, se dezactivează Wi-Fi-ul, Bluetooth-ul, GPS-ul și toți sensorii din interiorul telefonului. Acest regim îți permite să folosești 10% din baterie timp de o zi întreagă. Extrem de comod dacă te-ai pierdut pe undeva. Pe 5 se găsesc și funcțiile introduse recent de Samsung ca Gesture Control, opțiunea de manevrare a telefonului cu o singură mână, My Magazine, o alternativă a Blink Feed-ului celor de la HTC ce utilizează aplicația Flipboard sau un grup de aplicații accesibil de oriunde pe nume Toolbox. Odată cu noul S5, Samsung a prezentat și un sensor de măsurare a pulsului împreună cu aplicația S-Health. Chestia cu măsurarea pulsului este mai degrabă un moft, pentru că dacă nu ar exista, nimeni nu ar spune ceva de genul. Da, băi, lucrează din tot normal, dar așa o întrebare. Scanner de măsurare a pulsului are? Din păcate, ce spune el nu are. Și întrebi el nimic. Același principiu de funcționare îl folosesc și aplicațiile de pe Play Store ca Rantastic Heart Monitor, acestea utilizând blitzul telefonului, iar rezultatele sunt cam aceleași. Oricum, măsurarea pulsului de la deget nu este cea mai exactă metodă, deci un scanner aparte doar pentru asta nu prea a avut rost. În schimb, combinată cu aplicația S-Health, pare destul de interesant. Când deschizi Apple, acesta te roagă să îți verifice pulsul. Aici ai statistica pe toate zilele, iar pe lângă puls, S-Health poate fi folosit ca antrenor personal. Acesta va măsura distanța pe care ai alergat-o și câte calorii ai ars în dependență de ce ai mâncat și de parametrii corpului tău. Toate aceste opțiuni adunate într-un singur loc mi s-au părut o idee destul de bună, chiar dacă în ultimul timp nu prea fac sport. În schimb, mai am un motiv pentru a începe. În concluzie, noul S5 nu este o revoluție în materie de smartphone-uri, ci mai degrabă o perfecționare. Ne-am convins că plasticul de pe spate nu este chiar atât de rău, dar din contra nu lasă urme și în primul rând este foarte practic. Camera a progresat și mai tare față de anul trecut, iar sistemul de operare este în sfârșit unul aproape curat și rapid. Nu prea am înțeles introducerea noilor scanere de amprente și de măsurare a pulsului, dar mofturile sunt mofturi, ele sunt aici, dacă vă sunt utile, le utilizați, dacă nu, ele nu o să vă încurce. Pe lângă toate acestea mai adăugăm specificații de top și uite așa arată rețeta unui flagman pentru anul 2014. Cam atât pentru astăzi, eu vă mulțumesc pentru atenție și fiți pe fază pentru că se apropie review-uri cu adevărat exclusive. Până atunci, nu uitați 4 cuvinte, like, comment, share și subscribe. Cu voi a fost Vico, toate bune! Ting is giving away a Samsung Galaxy S5 on Monday, May 19th. To find out how you can enter to win, watch our unboxing. Good luck. Hello and welcome to Ting's unboxing of the Samsung Galaxy S5. We'll quickly take a look at the cardboard shell. Uh, you'll just see some spec and feature info on the back. Uh, but I think we should just get into the good stuff. 
So I will open this up. And um, first we have the brand new Samsung Galaxy S5. Uh, I can't wait to tell you more about this awesome smartphone. But I think first we'll just take out everything that comes with the S5 uh, inside the box. Just give me a sec to open this up. And first we have the quick start guide, uh, which you don't need. Just give us a call or head to our help desk and we can uh, help you out with everything you'll need. Next are the earbuds. These are uh, Samsung signature earbuds. Um, there's a volume rocker and a mute button on the cord, which is pretty nifty. Um, and as well, Samsung always likes to give you some different sized earbuds, just in case the normal size uh, isn't comfortable in your ears. Next, we have the wall adapter. Um, so this obviously goes alongside the charging cable, which I will also take out. So this is for um, charging your device or syncing it uh, for music or files or what have you. And next, we have the battery. Um, this is actually a 2800 milliamp battery, uh, which will give you 21 hours of talk time along with 16 hours standby. And uh, that's really, really good for a smartphone of this caliber. And it's great to see uh, the high-end Android devices really starting to get a, a longer battery life. And really, this is uh, everything that comes inside the Galaxy S5's box. So I've just popped in the battery, and I think we're ready to take a look at the Galaxy S5 itself. Um, but first, I think we should compare it with some similar devices. Um, so first up, we have its predecessor, the Galaxy S4. Um, the device is slightly shorter at a 5-inch screen instead of the 5.1-inch screen of the S5. Um, it's also a little bit thicker, the S5 is, than the S4 at um, 0.32 inches uh, of thickness instead of 0.31. Next, I will grab the Google Nexus 5. Um, the Nexus 5 actually has the same size screen as the Galaxy S4 at 5 inches, so it's just a little bit smaller than the S5. Um, as you can see. And uh, as well, similar side by side, the Nexus 5 is just a bit uh, thicker at 0.34 inches. So next up, we have the HTC One M7, which is the first generation of HTC One, um, not the brand new device. Um, the HTC One screen is only 4.7 inches. And while it might look closer in size than that, it's just because the device has uh, pretty wide black bezels on the side of the device, along with physical buttons on the bottom. And it's actually significantly thicker at 0.37 inches. And lastly, we have the iPhone 5. Um, so this device obviously looks absolutely tiny in comparison to the S5. Um, the screen size is only 4 inches. Uh, but actually, in terms of thickness, it's pretty interesting. Um, the iPhone 5 is thinner than the S5 at 0.30 inches. Um, so that's pretty interesting to note. So... These devices are uh, arranged largest to smallest, and hopefully this comparison will just give you a bit of a better understanding of uh, how the physical size of the S5 matches up with some other heavy hitters on the Ting lineup. So as the device boots up, you can clearly see that it's powered by Android. I think we're first just going to take a look at some of the physical aspects of the device. Um, on the bottom of the front, we have the Home button which is cleverly also the fingerprint scanner. At the top of the front is a 2.1 megapixel camera for video chatting and selfies. On the top of the device, uh, we have a headphone jack along with an IR button. And the very bottom holds the USB 3.0 port, which has a waterproof cover on top. It's pretty hard to open, so I'm actually going to use a SIM card ejector to help me out. Um, but this really is one of the coolest features about the S5, and that's that it's fully waterproof for 30 minutes in up to one meter of water. And in terms of charging, you can actually still use a regular micro USB cable uh, on the right side, or you can use the USB 3.0 that will come with your device, uh, which actually will be faster. Um, but obviously remember that before you teeter on the edge of a pool or head outside in a hurricane, make sure that bottom port is completely closed. Uh, the auxiliary port, however, does not need to be covered. Samsung has actually added a coating inside to keep your S5 waterproof. Next, I'll show you the physical buttons. On the right side is the power, aka sleep button. On the left side is the volume rocker, very standard. We'll flip it over, and uh, really the first thing you'll notice about the back is that it's very textured with mini dots. Um, it's kind of leather-like, kind of feels similar to the first generation Nexus 7. 
Um, the rear camera is a 16 megapixel beast, which can actually shoot 4K resolution video. Um, you actually can't even watch that on your device, uh, but there is certain TVs that do support that resolution. Um, and just below the camera is the flash, along with the heart rate monitor, um, which works with Samsung's S Health app. That's a, a new feature of the S5. And I guess the back, um, back in general really, does feel leather-like. Um, it's grippy and it's nice, uh, but unfortunately it is kind of flimsy. Um, I will take it off for you now. Um, I know a lot of people actually do like, th like this because a plastic back um, can't easily smash, but at the same time obviously it makes your device maybe feel or uh, look a little cheaper than say an HTC One or iPhone. But I know it has its benefits um, and a lot of people do like it. Um, and on the back of the device, on the inside, is uh, the battery, and above that, the micro SD card slot, which can fit up to an extra 128 gigabytes of storage. And that's about it. Uh, like I said before, you just need to make sure to uh, fully close the back of the device by uh, clamping all the clips down, or else your device will not be waterproof. And I really think the overall design uh, of the S5 is similar to the S4. Um, in terms of physical appearance, the only real difference is the textured back, obviously alongside with it being fully waterproof, which is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. So the Galaxy S5 has booted up. The device's screen size, like I mentioned before, is 5.1 inches with a full 1080p resolution. And the screen actually also has local contrast technology display, which adapts to your current light settings, so that seems pretty neat. The S5 is running TouchWiz, which is an Android skin Samsung has developed. Uh, if you're familiar with any of the previous Galaxy devices, you'll notice that the skin then looked a lot more 3D than it does now, whereas uh, it's a lot flatter, more like stock Android. And one interesting thing to me is uh, the notification bar on the S5. Um, so you'll normally see a few settings options, but if you actually tap that square button, um, you'll see a drop down of way more tools. I mean, you can actually choose from a variety of buttons and add or remove whichever settings toggles you want to just by this uh, active buttons and available buttons section. So you can drag and, dr drag and drop and add and remove uh, whichever options and toggles you'd like. And as well, um, the settings menu looks a lot different than it did before, uh, as you'll notice these large icons. You can, however, switch back to the list view if you'd like just by uh, pressing the settings button in the top right corner. And something interesting is that if you swipe to the left, you'll see My Magazine, uh, which was a popular feature from the Note 3, and they decided to uh, bring to the S5. So that wraps up the Samsung Galaxy S5 unboxing. You can pick up this device right now in black or white from the Ting shop. Or, if you want to win one, make sure you're a Ting subscriber, like this video, and leave a comment telling us the one thing you like the most about the Galaxy S5. We'll be drawing the lucky winner on Monday, May 19th. Good luck.